Hello and welcome to the trilogy run. Now before I start rapidly talking away, um, we've got the floorboard and the dog is loose. So <laughs> loose in the house. Okay, so been thinking about this all day to be honest with you. Now today's been the first day I think I've really, really had off away from work. Um, I've had a couple of days off last week. I was loaded with the cold, the cold that was going around this morning. I'm still feeling the cold, but every day for the last couple of months, it's been work's been hard graft. You know, there's a lot been going on with work and then coming home and then sort of getting ready for the video, uh, sorting the video out, thinking about the video, mentally draining. Um, that's what this trilogy rant's about. Um, now I do apologize. I am quite far away from the camera natural light i've got a bray white light here and a bray white light there i'm totally winging this now as you can see i'm a massive fan of films and that's decades of working for hmv and this is what the trilogy rant's about it's how we got to the new video that was just released right now two hours ago which is the hmv moving video part two part one being the uh, second part and the stair video being the original and um yeah it's mental it's it's just been a long time coming now. I've, I've had this rant in my head all day and where I want to start with. So the only way to really start is this. When I came into this house and I literally pulled the wallpaper and the wall came down, which is brilliant. Black suit everywhere. Um, and Dan Connor did me a massive solid by coming in and just plastering like nearly 70% of the house. And this was through lockdown. Now, HMV over the years there's dribs and drabs of videos but the old owners didn't really really push social media social media wasn't a thing i mean years and years we're talking like 2000s what was there wasn't a thing called facebook there wasn't a thing called youtube you know what i mean it was all about you know displays and products and learning how to stack stuff at christmas like that now over the years there's been little bits of videos here and there but i've always had a massive gray line between work and home life lonely train entertainment and work but now they sort of work hand in hand as the new owners really thrive on people being fandom being fans having passion for the product and my passion has definitely been recharged um i would say the last year or so and that's not just coming out of lockdown um my passion's been recharged a few times music wise as well videos so let's go back to glenn um i've known glenn since he was very young and Glenn's artwork is something that Glenn's really been passionate about and really getting themselves out there and when it was to do with the live and local shows at HMV um the Gateshead ones I always treat like I would treat a music video back in the day it would be I would have a regimental checklist um uh, we had some great great artists play we had Mitch Laddie we had Scott Michael Cavigan I also took that and did it in Newcastle with them two playing together for the first time we had Elizabeth Little we have Steve Pledger we have Beth McCary Liam Carr um, we had some great talent played there and we also had Steel Town Music providing the PA but we've been in the shopping center and we had a few like cautions when we had Beth McCary play because she had a drummer um and it was like well it's kind of unfair have you heard their metronomes when the metronomes have their dance it's like it sounds like the thunder gods coming through the wall um but again it it like the local artist thing it shouldn't just be about bands again with glenn and his artwork and then the people you meet at these conventions like F for the love of horror like theo kane um and horror con and afron jones and killian h gore these people who have got like set up stores and travel all around the country creating artwork and i understand that licenses becomes a bit of a problem but again there's a lot of original art out there so glenn was the first one we put on at work and um had glenn come in draw a nice collage piece which is in the other room now um of just hmv and meet and greet talk like well what's going on there it's an artist it doesn't have to always be a band and then stuff like uh ollie ollie pato and then Scott Robinson were also booked in there, but they got cancelled because of lockdown. So lockdown really hit and that shaked everything up. Now, going back to the story about pulling the wallpaper in the house and creating an absolute mess, um, Dan advised not to do anything at the top of the stairs. That was brilliant. It's a massive bit. You know, it could be a quad post, it could be a poster here or there. What to do with that wall? Because you walk out the end room and it's like, boom, look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to stand if you check out the um, video. 
It's hard to stand at the top of the stairs and do any kind of hosting uh, in that respect of a video one. But like, let's get what we're gonna do. And then I'll just sleep with Glenn. You know, Glenn had been around. I mean, if you check out the, some of the videos we were doing prior to that, up in the Guild Bridge, which is around the Moorside area, where Glenn's done massive art pieces in the caves and stuff. You know, we would, prior to that, we were going up there on the walks and showing like Glenn's footage on the channel and stuff like that. So again, it was like, Building the walls, it's supporting Glenn and stuff like that, and Glenn's also painted steel time music. So, you know, it's it's keeping it keeping it a local thing, and that's what live and local should be about as well. So, Glenn came around, and we threw some ideas at Glenn. Glenn then came around two nights in a row, sketched it, then drew it in one go. And all the time, we set up the camera, this camera on a time lapse, filming, changing angles, chatting, changing records, chatting. I had no idea at that point what the music video was going to be or even if it was a video. I had no idea because Glenn had started one corner and by the time he got there we were chucking new ideas and I was just inspired and fascinated by how much Glenn did and just chucking it out there and just being able to go do 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 and it's just like wow that's talent, real talent. So we got talking then about HMV and the second night Glenn was here. Um, Glenn went. Thanks very much, Glenn. Cheers. Um, I sat down and, for the first time in a long time, was really inspired. I had a few beers, and I did the entire stair music video in one take, one sitting, not one take, one sitting. Um, VHX, which were known as Emil's Transmission Telegraphical Device, that's the name of the band. That's a band who I met through live and local, who unfortunately never got around to performing live, but I've got about six or seven vinyls, you know, like pressed vinyls. And then Dan, who's the main guy behind the band, gave us his anthology on digital. They're now called Emile's Transmission. Tell, I mean, I have to I tell Dan all the time. The year checks was easy to say and to remember. Um, but yeah, so Emile's Transmission, tell it, they're, they're called that again. Um, I sat down and I didn't know where this video was going to go. I lined them all up, dropped the audio if there was any audio, looked at it, cut a promo, um, just at the promo of the video, and I sat there. And as soon as I heard the song Stare, which I think is like track 22, 23 on this anthology digital file, I was like, that's the song. And it just worked. It just worked. And like Glenn, I think Glenn couldn't believe the video came out. If Glenn wasn't here, I don't think Glenn would even believe that the video would just appear overnight. And was, that was inspired. And you know, the wall was looked fantastic. I was really over the moon with it. I love the negative look. A lot of people thought that Glenn was going to really fill it in full cold detail. I wasn't wanting that. I like the negative effect because of the chosen green on the wall to begin with. Um, and we went to my boss Karen at that time and says look like look at this and at the time we were in this the second HMV gated and we'd been there for a couple of years maybe two or three years and it, it needed a facelift I always said the counter was too dark and we had two television screens but I was like there could be more on this there could be more there and Karen really really embraced right yeah let's do this let's get Glenn back into the shop and then let's do it live. And at that point I was thinking, right, it's got a part two. You know what I mean? There's gonna be a Glenn video part two. The second video was really well received. The band liked it. The band even wanted to um, bring it out on a seven inch single and get, get Glenn to design it. And I think that's still a thing that might even happen. Um, so all that was going on. And we sort of like started had ideas. We're like, right, we'll have Michael Jackson on the mirror. <laughs> like Man in the Mirror, we'll have The Predator, we'll have Prince, it was going to be local artists. I wanted Pac flying down from the ceiling. Everyone was like, Pac, who's Pac? I was like, Pac, you know, the wrestler Pac, who comes in the shop an hour ever again. It'd be like amazing if he came in and seen himself on the wall, like, hang on a minute, what's going on here? And like, I had loads of ideas like that, but it was very limited. If you've seen the old store, it was just a massive long rectangle, um, very narrow, streamlined. It was a proper streamlined store. Going from two floors to one. And it's amazing now to think of how many people thought we haven't been open since the Red Mall and completely missed us in the Platinum. Because it was all, it, this new shop's all about the footfall, which is something that's not acknowledged in the video, but 
yeah we were in that store and it could do with a facelift and uh the idea was set and karen approved it and like um glenn says right pay for the supplies and i paid for the supplies then this months ago and um i got pulled to the office one day and i thought i'd done something wrong i thought something's wrong right i've done a boo boo or something like that and i got told that you know we're going to be moving i was like again <laughs> so i got told ahead of a lot of people because i think it was a week before we were meant to do this thing with glenn um because i took days off to go in and be a horse because i wanted to time lapse it at this point i was thinking about what music it could be and what music could be, like where we could go with this and the idea then was to have mitch's music moonlight and have johnny blue hat davis as well so mitch and johnny were both going to be on the walls you know and creating this mad music montage and there was loads of ideas and I got told, right, we're going to be moving. And the reason we're moving is because JD Sports bought the entire run. Like game shifted straight across the road into a very small compact unit. Flannel shifted. Flannel are a big deal. The Disney shop, unfortunately, has gone uh, due to other circumstances. I mean, they bought a Disney up so quick. I don't know if JD Sports has anything to do with that, but Brit was like oh my god they haven't even given us time to grieve do you know what i mean Prip was nearly in tears the disney shop had gone paper chase had gone massive run gone and we were looking at different stores jw sports had been empty for a while it was two floors but i think they were only looking to give us one but there was escalators right in the way it was just like yeah oh there's hmv going up the escalators like i'll get there next time you know get up the escalator and go back down the escalator like penguins back in the 80s remember that game anyway off that round um, Karen really fought for Evans and like hands down it's all about the footfall and the footfalls I mean she was bang on right the footfalls being immense but the shop needed a lot of work so when the shop was essentially getting ready to move I was said to Glenn I says look hopefully when the shop's moved we'll be able to do that so here comes a second video so Glenn being the first video you know being approved by the band and just being what it is I'm over the moon with it and I love video editing and something I'm doing a side project at the moment is I'm revisiting the archive of Better Than FA and I'm seeing footage lately and nights out in massive long segments of footage from 15, 20 years ago that I don't remember. And I have seen a lot of early video editing which I love to music and they've been preserved. You know, it's very hectic. I have no idea sometimes what tape's gonna be on next or what's gonna appear and i've been getting that resurgence respire and really want to push stuff and i was doing that while we sort of got ready to shift and we shifted really quick and last time we shifted from two floors to one and there was a lot more staff um i did a night shift predominantly on that one um and even then you know my phone i've never been the one for the phone because i've always been the one to have a camera um i filmed a few little bits here and there it got you know what i mean it was two floors to one compact shifting from one side of the metal center to the other not a lot was captured there was enough there to be captured but this time got my phone in my pocket and you're at work you don't want to you know you, you've got your phone in your pocket you can capture bits and bobs oh you can bring the camera in but then how do you put a camera this side down on the building site you're getting damaged it's capture 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 in the old shop and the old shop you know like packing up is quite easy dismantling is quite easy it is time consuming it is hard graft and we got out there quicker than planned i think we had still about three or four days left um we were ahead of schedule that we ended up with an extra week off because we were ahead we just went in there and boom and i sat back and like over that time i had off i waited to the very end to write going right let's get it on let's go get this video done and i started like there's the start here's the end clip by clip by clip by clip put it in drop the audio save it snips and bits there there's the dog um right right we're getting there we're getting there and again mitch's music uh, moonlight johnny and i had so much fun editing that video and you know you get it to you like again you bring it right down the video is just over 11 minutes but again the music there a little bit of an intro track the shop's full the shop's empty but then to show footage from back in the past of how long i've actually worked at hmv when i had hair 
and then echoes of the shop when I was pulling all the footage together for the video, finding the interview with me when I had me appendicitis and you know that footage never seen the light of day and now that video actually having some purpose in the video. I thought it was a great homage and like again with the video it was kind of like Kev's dancing, woo, You're just having a little bit of fun with it but because you know you have this footage and you start chopping it down to make it fit you're more looking towards a flow because it'd be great to like film and film and film and, and hit every cue beat like everything to the beat and the cue and you, everything you want but then you run out of footage and the halfway through the song you're like, eh. so again it was more of a flow and, and you you know you, you're letting the the viewer watching it see this and you're getting to show everyone, you know, in you know, by none there's none, and then at the end of the video was left to be too continued. And Mitch's music worked really well. And then it got to the new shop, and the new shop was epic. You know, there was a lot there, and as you see, every week um, I would be putting more and more files into the video, and I was starting to get a bit concerned, <laughs> from, like. We, we we had a deadline and we missed the deadline by a day but there was so much going on um there was so many things we had to do again like we would build a display and then the air conditioning it would need to be above you and you have to shift the display like one of them was the books and i think me and paul really put our back out trying to shift these books um but you go to work got your phone in your pocket you capture a moment of life get on with it stuff moves weeks pass uh, I've got some downtime to go down to Sheffield because me and Britt were going to see Bring Me the Horizon as well as ha hang out with Theo. Um, so the Unit 11 was a quirky little thing to bring in. Um, and then the idea of finally getting Glenn back, that was awesome. Ed, but this time as well, bringing Two Frag in with. So I've known Two Frag and Glenn about the same time because both of them know my brother um, and the front were all from the cas Castleside area. And Two Frag's just been doing some amazing artwork he's been doing. Um, stuff for Matty Connors band Castro and stuff like that and does a lot of the Steel Town musics I know I've sort of stole stuff away from Steel Town I'm sorry Matt I love Steel Town music there's a t-shirt just a shout out to the Arnold and the legend that is the Connors um, but again it was more like right it's cool um, and but again it was like going around okay where's the lads going to paint and then someone will go up there or you know like Paul Ray would build a, a fort and Casper doesn't want anything in his stock room and like it's just like Christ you know, every, everything's just been trying to find its groove its moment its time Brit also started working there and Glenn and Tufrag came in and once they started I mean I walked to the front and I went right we originally talked about this back wall bit but I says this pillar this pillar is prime one side each combined on the right nipper running around with a paintbrush you know, it was a collaboration, you know what I mean, of uh, like ideas. I mean, Glenn based the nipper awaken because my love for Godzilla um, and like shouting stuff out like I love Ice Cube. You know, it's like, who do you want there? Ice Cube. Like there's a gizmo there. Like oh, calm down, you know what I mean? Because again, it's kind of like this was also a sequel to Stay. But now it was also another problem because it with it, it, it it's a, a sequel to the first shop video now but it's also a sequel to glenn's videos this is why it's a trilogy because like the video i wanted to just shift halfway through and i'm like i'm thinking far too out the box but then again i wasn't wanting to rein myself in about it i'm like right until the shop's open don't worry about it now the other looming thing was we were meant to have a live show on the day in opening and it got to the day before and we had to pull the plug and a massive shout out and respect to Mitch because Mitch was the full guy organizing this this is like kind of like right we got a real good chance to do something really good Johnny Blue Hat Davis was going to play Johnny's obviously Sam Fender saxophone man um, Dan Brooker who I think is an amazing guitarist and I think is a great addition to play with Mitch he we'd filmed him and um, just coming back from Sheffield that was amazing and then Matt Connor was like, well, I want to play. And like, I'm obviously going to want Matt Connor to play in the shop. The first day of opening, you know, went to the Metro Centre, filled in all the event forms, said, look, it's going to be noisy for about half an hour. And the guys are going to do an unplugged set. The guys doing the unplugged set 
created two things. One, that would again be like, right, it's going to be filmed. Who's going to film it? Obviously me, but other angles. How do you control that? How do you control the massive footfall we're going to have? Because we're a new shop opening. It's like a blue light, like moth to the flame. Like, oh, look, <laughs> music, <laughs> like dancing, like Beetlejuice up to the house and that, you know, dancing away. Um, and we had to pull the plug because we didn't open on the Friday, we opened on the Saturday, which was a shame, but we made the right call. Um, and that is something that we will do down the line. But up until that point, the music for the video was going to be Mitch, and it was probably going to be a track from Another World as the Mitch Laddie band rather than Mitch's solo stuff. But again, still involving Johnny. I even pulled 15 and a half gigabytes worth of footage from the launch party of that album from the Clooney the previous year. And the idea of like bringing the band in and the music there and there was loads of ideas loads so in the downtime when i was away again i went to durham uh, vinyl festival and cav was playing outside and cav was someone also i was very interested and in fact you know his to be someone's ep had just come out but in fact his older band laconia there was a song called waiting which i've always loved i thought oh that would be interesting but I still thought too heavy and the video is going to be too subliminal. You know, it's going to be very fast paced and I didn't want to overthink that. Um, I spoke to Dave Smith. Dave Smith is the chief of uh, Slum Sapien Records and someone we were talking to prior lockdown, you know, about bringing this local, like just not just local artists, local labels. And he was telling me about Steve Strong. He was telling me about the Dunes. He was going along and I, the Steve Strong vinyl just looked amazing. And he was like, oh, you get a t-shirt that and CD if you want it. And Britt was like, went off listening to one phone. She's like, that's definitely your cup of tea. Because I love scores. I love soundtracks and stuff like that. So I came away from that record festival with that vinyl. And I painfully started putting the clips in, in sequence order. Um, halfway through it, um, I cut a promo. And I, I hate it, I hate it. I hate it now that everyone thinks that I absolutely love Charlie's Angels. Every month in the other room, I change the quad poster. It's been Broken Arrow, it's been Drop Zone. It's gonna be Prayer of the Roller Boys. I've got, honestly, right? Just so you know, I've got stuff in here, look. There's Broken Arrow, just been on about. But I've got stuff like this one, which, this is, I mean, Cuffs is one of my favorite films ever. Uh, HMV, anyone watching this, you've got the, the, the ability to release movies. Cuffs is one, you know, I love Cuffs. Cuffs is amazing, and this should be, pray on the roller boys. This film needs released. This film needs released, there you go, pray on the roller boys. So they're quad posters. And this month it's been Charlie's Angels because I found it at Hex and Boot Sale. That was a Corbridge Boot Sale. And I put it up there and now everyone thinks I love Charlie's Angels. No one's got anything to say about an original Predator, Rambo 3, a Jaws one there. No, 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 everyone thinks I love Charlie's Angels. I just change it every month, all right? It's foil. Okay, right. So anyway, I cut that promo. Um, um, I cut that promo because of Steve Strong and i was very overwhelmed and i was very feeling the pressure of like how do you top the last video and what song it's going to be because there's so much footage there's so much footage and originally i'd sort of chosen one of mitch's songs which i think was either met me at the wrong place at the wrong time and um i looked at maybe possibly putting one of steve strong's song as an intro in the Mitch's song, right? That's what I was thinking. And just the tempo, the change of pace, it wasn't right. I wasn't feeling it. And then I put Steve's album on the vinyl player and I was waiting for it to save. And I just pressed play because I, like, it, we, we, I was well in there, maybe the second side of Steve's. And I decided to flip it back on at the start. And I watched it. And I tell you what, the bit where Casper unplugs the Hoover. Honestly, like that is one of the things I kept because of the change and it just fit perfect. It just like his music fit perfect. And I was like, like there's an outline there and 
you're going to go in you're going to tuck it up a little bit you're going to move some stuff around but there's someone here and like pink tank uh, is there's an interlude track that i missed if you were listening to the whole ep but like you know you mean like i was like right it's cool so i spoke to steve strong and he gives the thumbs up i spoke to dave smith he gives the thumbs up i said how can you not do he gives the vinyl um, YouTube's been another problem because of copyright, but um, it just seemed to fit. And I had so much fun. Even though it was time consuming because there was a lot of downtime waiting for stuff to save or master, um, and then making sure it's cri uh, correct, taking some stuff out. There was only a few cheeky bits refilmed to make it work. Um, Paul Ray has got bleached hair very early on, which is something Paul's just done. Uh, Paul. Um, filled in a few little bits just to move it along a little bit and I replaced a few bits I wasn't happy with and again it's all spur of the moment stuff it's none of it's foreshadowed and planned um, obviously like the nights like Glenn was there um, there was some outtakes and more than being flogged really because like I was finished starting getting up at 6 in the morning going to work doing a full shift then Glenn was coming in and like some of them nights I left I was getting home at 1 o'clock in the morning and back Jump cut, like the camera's got 25 gig. Just ran out. Of, I've been talking for far too long. <laughs> Dogs just ran in. Yeah, um, I felt the pressure to deliver. Um, as I say, it was a lot of time, the downtime saving. Obviously, I've been battling the cold. Um, and the other night, what was it two nights, three nights ago, I came in and asked you, right, it's on. It is seriously on. This video is going to be done tonight. And um, started at the start, dot the T's and cross the I's as I say, um, make sure Steve was giving all the name checks, make sure like Karen was thanked for the pizza and, you know, went through it and, you know, I think I delivered. I know it was epic, but it works being epic. I think that the video shouldn't be compressed that much. It, it, it shows you a journey. And then to have Ice Cube like the shop, which is just amazing. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like as a trilogy looking back, it's like challenging myself because I don't, again, going back to me, there's part of us like rants away like this a lot of the time. And I share my passion about stuff like that. But like sometimes I don't challenge myself enough by putting that extra little bit of effort in there because I love videoing and I've got to remember that. And it's great finally i think after all these years of working for the company and that's to present someone like that and, it, and again like glenn's been the first part the second one and, and the first and the second you know and that's what it's about you know i mean it's going it, it, the the bar's been raised loads of hmvs now around the country are doing this um, there's an artist put stuff out today where Pennywise and a T Rex is on there, Garfield said, and Garfield said, aka uh, Two Frogs, like, hey, that's my T Rex. And, like, you know what I mean? It's been inspired, it's bouncing all around the company. The, the artwork went viral, you know what I mean? And, like, again, I also felt like delivering, you know, the video, because the video with the music, and it's credit to Steve Strong's music as well, that pace change, I honestly. You, you shrunk some bits down there so it bounced a little bit down there but his music just fit perfect and again it's all about capturing the moment and being inspired and sometimes when you're inspired by artists i was really inspired by jimmy Eat world when i got their album it was a year ago they got a re the last track of their new album is really good and you, you go oh yeah and you hear nothing but you don't invest the time to make a video because it's pointless and massive credit to steve and sabian records were going yeah do it so this has been a massive rant. Cameras running out of air. Uh, film. Um, um, as I say, I just wanted to get this trilogy rant off my chest. As I say, I've been ill. Uh, battled the cold. Um, dog sniffing us. Hey, excuse you. Um, it's just been mental. It's just. It just feels a weight to have that video done. Everyone who needs to see it, seeing it, for it to get released as well. And now people are like you're finishing work or whatever watching it now when i'm talking about it but again it's just a massive thank you to glenn two frag karen and kev everyone who works at the shop um 
everyone who's come in and been supportive of it and definitely Sapien Records and Steve and especially Mitch and the guys as well because you, you could see the original idea, the idea would have been this music video mashup but I think no disrespect to the band bringing them in would have been great but I think showing the shop being built the way it is it's a moment of life captured so thanks for watching see you in the outtakes now who's smiling now who's smiling now who's smiling So this is how you take a wall off, Japanese style. Okay, run on. Come on, have it, have it. There can only be one. Hello, hello, hello. This is going in the trilogy rant. So last week when I was editing the video, I haven't mastered it yet, so this can go in there and creep in a week later. Um, I found a clip that has done its rounds before and um, it was filmed so one of the first things I asked Karen years ago kind of okay or kind of film the shot was the arrow video which is still online but I couldn't tell you what the video was it's probably me buying arrow films and talking about arrow films <laughs> promoting arrow um, so yeah anyway I was going around and film a few voids because I missed a few taglines and stuff I was doing the whole jumpy cutty thing then as well and um um, I caught it with Ned and every time you put Ned in front of the camera it's just comedy gold so this clip was originally filmed for a very early HMV Arrow video and uh, yeah <laughs> it's uh, just fucking priceless I hope you enjoyed just, just any time I would probably do one at a time just in case you don't do it I missed the tagline that's what it's about and that tagline is that should be a cue fuck off puppy I missed another tagline what's the tagline? I'm fuck off! That's not a tagline. I can't swear in this video. I'm, that's an outtake. It'll have to go in the fast forward Bobby, outtakes. Fuck off, you cannot eat me fucking vegetables of doom. It's like a teddy bear. So I missed another tagline. What's the tagline? Yeah. Uh, what's the tagline? <laughs> I won't do this again. Taglines the vegetables of doom. Fuck off! <laughs> Bobby. Ted, it's trying to attack me doom veggies. Look, proper squish it like proper the vegetables of doom. What, help me squish it out my hands? Alright. Make, like, destroy the vegetables of right. doom. Like, destroy, that's why I give you two for. So, so you only want? You could destroy one. But so that would be the vegetable, not the vegetables. Well, the vegetables, you've got to get it right. <laughs> that's vegetables. All I'm going to say is, I've missed the tagline, and you go, the tagline is, Bobby. the vegetables of doom, and squeeze them like, boom. I, like, I, I can do the simultaneous squeeze. Yeah. I think I'll be happy squeezing simultaneously. Didn't your son give you some pair of boobs a <laughs> few years ago? To practice. You've been practicing for a yeah. while for this. Yeah. You got a dog that or a dog's mogwai? putting me off. That's a mogwai. Ted, would you lose the dog, please? Yeah. The vegetables of doom. The vegetables of doom. So I missed another tagline. What's the tagline? The tagline is the vegetables of doom. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> vegetables of doom. <laughs> I'm covered in fucking doom jism. I think so. No, he's moving. Okay, here's an outtake for you. All right, in case you're still watching this. My foot, right? You notice how halfway through I had my foot here? <laughs> this dog right here is a Romanian rescue. It's someone I rescued, didn't I? Saved you from the kill shed, didn't I? Brought you all the way over. Yep. Left a bone, right? And I stood on the bone, right? While we were moving shop, right? This is the second part, right? this foot right here right so I stood on this bone going down the stairs hurt and I cracked on and um, I had a pair of shoes chewed them chewed me pair of shoes me sketches so bad they went in the bin didn't they yeah gone in the bin so for a couple of days at work I was using me uh, mountain shoes like I do for walking around here because I live in the, the sticks and I walked them to the, to the point that there's no more and I had a, my toe was starting to stick out on this side of my shoe, right? 
So this was pretty much near the day of um, the shop opening. So my foot's still hurting at this point, right? So I'm limping around and it's horrible. And you know, I, like everyone's like, what's wrong with your foot and you're limping? I'm like, ah, oh, it's hurting. And, you know, trying to carry units, it's hurting, it's hurting, it's hurting, but you crack on. Went to Primark for the photo for the front of the shop that's used as a thumbnail for the video. Got yourself a pair of look like Converse, but not Converse, you know what I mean? And um, I got a size bigger than normal because I tried the size 10 and I was like, oh, so I got the size 11. And now when I think back to it, I feel like I had points on my foot. Do you know what I mean? Like I just looked down at my feet because my feet were hurting that much, right? I just feel like there were points, like like dear the tentacles on my feet. They didn't feel like shoes. It felt like I had pointy shoes on and that's how bad my foot was hurting. I was coming home and I was limping. I asked Britt, my partner, look at my foot. Now there, don't know what you're talking about. My mum had came round. They look at me foot, now there, what you're on about. Foot is killing me, right? Killing me. Um, I went and got some Pumas. Um, Size is another shop that has gone from the Platinum Mall. So I got myself a pair of Pumas. So I don't go and chew them. Feel nice on my feet. Foot still hurting. One of my days off, it's about two weeks ago, maybe it was two, three weeks ago now. I was off and I was like, I am not leaving the house today. My foot is killing me. And I'm walking around and downstairs is laminated. So I'm walking around. And I just seen like what can only describe as a ping pong sticking out the side of my foot. And I was like, well, that's not right. And I was like, this is like I've, I've known this foot now for nearly 40 years of my life. That is not right. So I got it on the table like that. And I just did that. And my entire foot exploded. Like literally, like a yogurt's worth, a yogurt pot's full of just gunk. My phone was on charge, my camera was upstairs, I was like this. And then Brit just had to come in with gloves and just squeeze me entire foot. It was minging. It looks like a bit of her bone came out. Uh, so I had to go and get it checked out. It's all right, um, but yeah, so much, that's, again, it's a gruesome story to tell right at the very end. But again, it's me to go, right, that was bad. And I think it's in the October. Unboxing there's a bit where you can see me foot and it's ridiculously swollen and I've had enough So the shoes I got from Primark in the bin and yeah again didn't slow down But man there was like that first weekend man it was so busy and I was just like hopping everywhere Yeah, I'll get you that. Yeah, oh, it's not there. <laughs> Which way? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know where anything is me foot hurts. Thanks for watching this. Hope you check out the videos and welcome to Lonely Tree Entertainment. Goodbye for now <laughs>